Hello, my name is Sarah Holland. Welcome to the Fertile Mindset Podcast. Each week on the podcast, we'll explore how your mind can help you create a meaningful and happy life. And through the conversations here, we'll be planting seeds of inspiration to bring you more clarity, purpose and joy. This podcast is for you if you've ever felt stuck or unsatisfied with life and know that you want to live in a bigger and more beautiful way. I hope you enjoy the time you spend with us. Let's begin. Hello and welcome back to the Fertile Mindset podcast after our relaunch last week, which was the release of new episodes after a break of nearly a year and a half. It is wonderful to be back and I've remembered how much I really love podcasting and I'm thrilled to share that we are most definitely back. The podcast is here to stay as we already have guests lined up for weekly conversations right through to the end of September. It seems like the new focus on the podcast and Fertile Mindset has really resonated and has attracted some truly inspiring guests who I'm having the best time talking to. In fact, as I record each episode, I feel so excited about sharing those conversations with you. So please do keep in touch each week to let me know which episodes you're enjoying and why. And if you'd like to write a review on Apple or Audible or rate us on Spotify, that would be very much appreciated. Thank you. Two bits of news from me and Fertile Mindset that I'd like to share with you. Firstly is that I'm now sending out daily messages of support and inspiration by email. They are called Daily Seeds and each day you'll receive a message, an idea or a tip to help bring you more clarity, purpose and joy. And when you sign up for the Daily Seeds emails you also receive a bundle of gifts which are short videos to teach you EFT tapping, the technique that I use at Fertile Mindset and then three more videos with easy tapping exercises to clear overwhelm, release stress in the moment, and improve focus and motivation. They are all extremely helpful and I hope that you enjoy using them. Go to fertilemindset.com slash daily seeds to sign up for free. And also I want to share that this summer I am running a special support circle that's just for those on a fertility journey of any kind. It's a place where you meet online with others who understand the unique challenges of fertility issues and you're guided through using EFT tapping with me to bring more calm and space into your fertility journey. It runs for the whole of July and we have a few spaces remaining ready for our start on the 1st in just a few days. It's called the Summer Fertility Support Circle and if you'd like details, get in touch with me at mail at fertilemindset.com or message me on Instagram or Facebook and I will send them straight over to you. So after the three mini episodes last week where I shared the three key values of clarity, purpose and joy that can help us create a happy life, we are now starting to speak to guests who really embody those values in both how they live their lives and in the work that they do. It's a pleasure to welcome back Alice Rose to the podcast and this time, like me, she's sharing how how her coaching and the focus of her work has expanded beyond the fertility world. Alice is an internationally recognised coach, speaker, writer and mum of three. She's the founder and CEO of Fertility Life Raft, the creator of BBC Radio 2's Fertility Week, and Alice works in and outside of the fertility world, coaching and mentoring women at all stages, inside her one-to-ones, her courses and her coaching mastermind happen. I hope you enjoy listening to our conversation and that you find Alice's approach to life both inspiring and empowering as she acknowledges the struggles and challenges that we all face and how we can continue to thrive and create the life of our dreams. Hi Alice, welcome to the podcast. It's lovely to have you back again. (laughs) Such a pleasure always to chat to you Sarah. Thank you so much for having me. You are very welcome. So we are going to be talking about something different today because we both come from a fertility background and that's how we first met and it's been a a great part of our work hasn't it but we were we were just talking before we hit record really about how that has transitioned over time and how 
we've been drawn to supporting so much more and I'd love to hear all about your journey and what you do now and how you got to that place but before we do that could you just give us a little bit of an intro to Alice and the work you do yes thank you yeah so uh, my my oh God, I, I need to get better at explaining this essentially I'm a coach so I'm a, a certified transformative coach which means that I work with one-to-one clients I have a coaching mastermind um, and in various other spaces and really that's what I have been doing actually this whole time I've been working in the fertility world uh, what I've been doing is 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 coaching people um but I also you know did a lot of awareness raising and campaigning around fertility um uh you know breaking down fertility stigma and uh trying to help people understand what that experience was like but I always say like that always came because of my own inner work first and because of my own journey of recognizing how I could step into that version of myself that was able um, to do that because before any sort of inner work any inner healing any creative healing that I did and I'll talk a bit more about that I was I would never have been able to show up in the way that I have done over the last six years you know creating my you know building my community online and then founding my um, platform, which is Fertility Life Rub. So I still run that. And that's become something which is, um, you know, kind of separate to, to me, Alice Rose. Um, Fertility Life Raft is now its own brand and its own um, sort of standalone almost uh, platform. But I, you know, it's still very much my vision. It's still very much my um I always call it like my fourth baby, really. Like I definitely birthed that bad boy (laughs) and it was something that came from within. It really did. So, you know, I feel very passionately about continuing to create that and at the same time, finding ways to make space to also support women at all stages through different um, aspects of you know, our experience as women. Um, And I am passionate about focusing on, on women for lots of reasons, but I you know have have been so enjoying kind of supporting women who are still in fertility or who are pregnant after fertility or who are parenting or who are setting up their businesses I love mentoring women in business and um, supporting them to be able to do that so that is a big sort of ramble about what I do because it is a bit of a it has expanded a lot over the last year or so so yeah that's me (laughs) wonderful it's been amazing to watch you over the the few years you know that we've been in touch and and seeing how it's evolved and will continue to it's it's really beautiful and you mentioned there about your own mindset work that enabled you to be able to give this kind of support could you tell us a little bit of your your story and what brought you to where you are now in doing this yeah Absolutely. So I, I I mentioned, you know, that I started um, doing this about six years ago, I started my Instagram account. And that was uh, the reason I started it was because I had really discovered something profound during my own fertility journey, which was that I had so much more agency and ownership over my thoughts and where I, you know, what I wanted my life to look like, um, even though I didn't know how my own journey would end at the time. And I just felt this was such a... Um, a huge revelation to me and I didn't see anyone else sharing it that that's that's why I wanted to start my account but I mentioned that when I started there were so many reservations about what will people think you know imposter syndrome fear of rejection fear of just being you know just just so many so many things I I that were in my mind that I had to really get over to start that account and begin to share and then as I've ex- explored what it feels like to kind of be you know a, a, a public more public figure I suppose and certainly you know I'm <laughs> not over here with millions of followers but I have you know definitely seen that when you kind of bear your soul a little bit and when you are out there you really do need to have um, a really strong connection to self and a strong um, ability to support yourself internally so when I say inner work and inner mindset work it's really looking at where I want to get to why I'm doing it and helping myself to get there on a daily basis really and also you know through my time of building this community and um, doing what I wanted to do in the fertility space my own personal life has been pretty chaotic I would say over the last four years it's been 
probably the most chaotic it will ever be because, <laughs> you know, I started it when I had my first daughter, Matilda. She was about 10 months old at the time when I began. And then I went through uh, more fertility treatment to have my second um, child, Reggie, who is now four. Um, and five weeks after he was born, after a planned C-section, um, you know, it was lockdown and I was at home with a three-year-old and a very refluxy newborn and it was probably the hardest time of my life actually I really it was incredibly difficult um we barely had any sleep we were barely functioning I mean Simon my husband at the time was still uh for the first you know couple of months was was still trying to work um full time even though he was at home so it was just awful <laughs> and at the same time I needed to keep what I was doing going and so that was very, very challenging. And in October of that year, that was when I actually launched my course for the first time. So to have been able to create that course and launch it and it for it, for it to have done as well as it did, and it did do very well in that first launch, that only was as, as a result of the, the, the sort of vision and intention and work that I'd already done on myself that I was able to do that. Um, and then... After that, um, we had a very unexpected third pregnancy. So again, you know, not that much longer after I'd gone through all of that. And then I had established my business. I had left my job. I had a limited company that was that was doing well. But I then discovered that I was pregnant and that was really not the plan. And after our second experience of having, um, you know, a, a quite a challenging time with, with my, my second um, that was hard, uh, especially after going through fertility stuff. So again, it, it was a very um, pivotal moment in my life personally, while also holding space for lots of people in my business. So to be able to do both of those things really did take a lot of um, inner, inner resource and support as well. Um, and so then we had... Uh, my third, um, we moved out of London. So again, like leaving that house move, we also had a really big um, family health scare, like with with someone incredibly close to me that was so, so hard and terrifying, actually, um, that came out of nowhere. So yeah, all to say that the, the, the way I've been able to do this and, you know, to hold space for my clients, my members, um, and to build up what I'm doing at the same time as this very chaotic time, personally, um, really was a result of of the work that I actually had found during my fertility journey and which I'm just so passionate about now and why I'm speaking to you today because I'm so, um, yeah, it changed my life. That was a huge answer. Thank you for staying with me if you're still listening. <laughs> I really wanted to let you tell us the whole story there because you know what it was proving all along is how, you know, not intentionally, not from your choosing at all, but you have thoroughly tried and tested everything that you teach you know everything that you believe in it came about because of the fertility journey that's when you yeah you learn all these resources and coaching and mindset techniques and so on and we don't know what life has in store for us do we we don't know what's around the corner next it is mm. a wild ride and you've had that opportunity could we say um <laughs> to to try and test it all out yeah. to the nth degree and and come out on top you know your business is thriving you you have always been you know on the outside looking in you're always present in your business you're showing up for others you're very true and vulnerable and, and honest as well about what you're going through but you still show up and you've still got a thriving business and you're still living your purpose which is really inspiring to see and when you talked about your first course you know that you launched when um your baby you know lockdown and your baby was new and you weren't getting any sleep and still you managed to create this course that you know was successful and it took me back to my first fertility course that I created and I did that during a house build when we weren't even living in our own home we were living in another home and I was walking I think I was walking two hours a day just to get my children to school and back so that was a big chunk of my day gone because <laughs> we were no longer living next door to the school and the rest of the time I was living with my parents and you know, visiting the site all the time with the builders. And I created a new course and it sold out brilliantly and it was amazing. And it's quite remarkable what we can do mm. under that kind of pressure and in those circumstances. Yeah. Um, and I yeah. know it's not always that easy. That's the thing, you know, that can be the time when we really do struggle and you can't get back on top of things. Mm. Um, so tell us a bit more about 
the coaching because it's transformational coaching isn't it you working is that yes right? yeah transformative coaching so and also just on that you know for anyone listening who's like oh my god I can barely get out of bed I'm like honestly there were absolutely days where I did the only thing that I achieved the only thing and it was more than enough was to keep us all alive honestly like there were very much survival days very much times where over the last four years particularly you know I it may have looked like I was, you know, thriving every day. It absolutely was not the case. And as you know, yeah, I am. I am very authentic and real on, on online. And I will share like when, I've, when I'm having really tough days. But I think that's part of what has allowed me to continue to show up because I'm not pretending. I'm never pretending that this is easy. I'm never pretending or um, telling everyone, you know, you just have to, you know, change your mindset and then it's fine. It's, it's really not. Like actually <laughs> the main thing that I often teach is that, by allowing however you're feeling to show up and holding space for that, that allows you to process it and come out through the other side, get the support you need, and then take the next step to where you want to get to. And, you know, I, I'm still very much working on, you know, a, a new version of uh, my future self that I want to step into. And, and actually I was, you know, talking about this just this week, the idea of the future self and looking at like, actually, yes, this is, this is, I am the, the the self that I wanted to create a few years ago. I, I did that. So now I'm like, right, now it's the next stage of where I want to get to. Um, while holding space for like how challenging it can be, whether you're in infertility treatment, whether you're parenting small children, whether you're pregnant, you know, whatever it is, whatever is pulling on your time resource and your energy, we really, we don't want to kind of like plaster over that, do we? We need to hold space for it and, and um recognize how challenging it can be but at the same time show that it is possible when you look at the internal narratives you're telling yourself I mean you with your amazing EFT work are able to do that aren't you through through kind of mm. acknowledging it and at the same time going and there are things that I can do here that are going to help me feel good feel like I'm stepping into that version of me yeah um, we, yeah we need those steps I think don't you of, of like acknowledging what you're actually dealing with Mm. accepting and acknowledging it and then you can start to move through and beyond it but not it's not just putting a sticking plaster on it or pushing yeah it to the side. you've got no. to be honest haven't you with the struggle exactly and, and the thing is as well like I think that sometimes um like I really see that that, that our culture kind of glorifies busyness and glorifies kind of that thing and I, I sometimes think god am I kind of somehow playing into that and I think well no because this is just my this is this is just me <laughs> this is just me and I love to do stuff and I love to be proactive and I like to and I'm ambitious and I'm I'm really owning that now so I think also as women you know we're not sort of given that um kind of pass to just go and be as ambitious and as you know goal gettery as as maybe we we naturally are and to be able to do that while you're also trying to make babies having babies raising children um it is possible but it's possible only with that kind of feminine approach essentially so you're able to live intuitively live seasonally live and give yourself what you need through those times that was a digression from the question that you actually asked me <laughs> a brilliant digression though <laughs> but I feel like it was like important to say because I really the last thing I ever want anyone to think is that you know you just have to get on and do it and it's like no make sure you're you're you, you know, know what though I, I I follow your stories every day I feel like I'm living your life with you Alice as I as I <laughs> Just check in with your stories every day. And I think it was just yesterday that you you said, you know, I had this kind of plan of what I was going to do this evening. And actually, I've just sat here and done nothing because that's yeah. what I needed to do. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and that's true. We can be busy, busy during the day and have our plan for self-care and catching up with friends or whatever we might want to do in the evening. But then actually, sometimes we just need space. Oh, you just can't be asked. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just, yeah, so I love that it's it's relatable and yeah. it gives permission doesn't it <laughs> yeah thank yeah you. but but at the same time you know like I I definitely like within my coaching mastermind this is you know so transformative coaching essentially looks at the deeper levels of where we actually want to get to so rather than just kind of going well I want to you know create a course create a business which is which is great great goal but you also need to be looking at well how are we going to get there with your whole self so you know it's a bit like when people um might go on a diet and then they just they might lose all the weight but if they haven't done that internal inner work they, they're probably going to put it all back on again so it's the same with transformative coaching essentially what you want to do is really look at like the core beliefs the internal stories the narratives that we're telling ourselves and use those as your um as the way to reprogram that part of yourself that is telling 
you know, that, 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 you, that you're consistently telling yourself, well, I can't do it because, or I'm not good enough because, or I will only be able to do that when, you know, you have to look at the narrative that you're telling yourself daily and ask yourself, is that actually the case? Like, or is there space for me to show up in a way that is going to incrementally move myself closer to where I want to get to? Um, and that's, you know, that that's that's the work, isn't it? To to be able to self-compassionately show up daily for yourself. And this is the thing, you know, you, you it's not about, and I've made loads of mistakes um, <laughs> through doing all of this, but it's only through failing, failing and learning from those mistakes that I've been able to continue to show up and to actually figure out what I want to offer to my audience. And now as I'm transitioning through from, you know, just solely fertility support into coaching women at all stages. Um, so it's it's a holistic approach, really, to becoming the version of yourself that can do the things that you want to do. Mm. And making that your new habit, isn't it? The way that you talk to yourself, the way that you see yourself, because it can yeah. go one way or another. It's like a downward slope that is hard to to climb back up from when you're very negative minded yeah. towards yourself and lack the compassion mm. um but yeah it's a powerful switch to make mm. um yeah that, that coaching work yeah um as as you've gone through this path what kind of obstacles have you come against for yourself then where you've brought in these techniques and mm. have you had that have you been doubting yourself along the way and and oh. struggled with and, and being public is difficult isn't it you know being out there and sharing and and whatever kind of feedback you might get or yeah. it's you know negative comments or or anything yeah. else like what's that been like being in the the kind of public domain and mm. open with your life I think that I've learned so much over the last six years through through doing what I do and learning that you know if I, if I'd made a reel that, that that got more views than than usual and then as soon as you have more eyes on your content you're going to have probably some people who just want to come in and stir up some trouble <laughs> and you know I used to kind of really get affected by that and now I really do it doesn't really happen very much now but there was definitely a time where it was. Um, you know, a bit more in the in the moment, it would it would get shared a lot. And then I had did have a few reels that would get just bring in like some troll um comments, which which were purely this is what you have to understand about trolls on the on the internet. They are not actually about you at all. They are not about what you're saying even. They are purely there because the person is trying to stir up trouble, trying to do whatever it is they need to do to make themselves feel better about whatever's dreadful in their life. And I think through understanding that um, in any capacity, you know, that that things come up, separating myself from things that have occurred. And there's been, I'd say, two or three specific cases where I've had to learn how to manage people making assumptions about me or judgments about me or deciding something about my character, which is untrue. And having to distance myself from that, even though it was really hard at the time and felt, felt really like I remember feeling like this is so unfair. This isn't true. This isn't who I am. This is not all I'm doing is trying to help people. Like, how can this, you know, be possible that people want to, um, you know, say anything negative about what I'm doing here, which is like purely to try and help people. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and going through that actually has made me so much stronger because it's helped me to continue to show up and there's a, a great um new book which I'm just reading now called The Third Perspective by Africa Brooke and um, essentially it's all about the idea that you know we we need to creatively be brave enough to express ourselves in the art of you know in the in the age of cancel culture so she talks about you know the idea that actually the best possible thing we can do for ourselves, for the world, for our audience, whoever it is, if we have a business, is to continue to show up and continue to be as true to ourselves as we possibly can. And in that way, that's how we actually grow and continue to grow and also have interesting conversations with people instead of that, you know, that cancel culture that we've been um, living in really for the last few years. Mm -hmm. um, but I definitely had lots of moments of doubting myself, you know, and, and just to go back to that specific um example of when I launched uh, my course for the first time 
that was absolutely terrifying for me. I was so nervous. I didn't even know how to use a Zoom webinar. I was so scared of the tech. I didn't know if anybody would show up for the free webinar that I did. Um, I literally felt sick. Like I remember the day that I was doing the free webinar and I knew that at the end of that free webinar, I was going to open up my course for sales for the very first time. I just remember like having the biggest butterflies all day I was so like I just used all of my tricks like I had a shower to kind of rinse off that kind of um negative energy to interrupt the thing to like have that cleansing that that feeling of like literally being cleansed <laughs> of everything I wrote down exactly how I wanted to feel so I would I sat and wrote down I am you know confident I am capable I am um serving people I am helping people to really help my brain have that dress rehearsal so how I was going to show up was going to be what I did it didn't mean that I didn't still feel the natural human like fear but I was giving it my best to support myself in order to show up and and do my best for for the people that were gonna come um so I remember doing those things I remember you know physically just moving my body to let that adrenaline kind of flow through so there were lots of different things that I was doing to actually help me show up and then on on that night I remember putting on my even though nobody could see it, I put on my sparkliest skirt, like my sequin skirt. <laughs> I did my makeup. I wore perfume. I made myself feel amazing. And I put in the office, I had my music going. I had my candles going. I felt great. So by the time I actually sat down and pressed, okay, let's go live, I was ready. And I had really paid attention to the fear. I'd really paid attention to the imposter syndrome. I, you know, the physical feelings of um, adrenaline and nervousness that were there had been also, you know, I'd held space for that. And people came and people were receptive. And I was so, um, I, I just loved it because I was able to be real with them, but at the same time show up and do the job that I was there to do. So that's a good example, I suppose, of showing how you can feel the fear, I guess, and, and do it anyway. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I remember... I remember that evening and being with you from a distance the watching journey. your stories. I remember the sparkly skirt even. I remember, I remember you sharing it on your stories. Yeah. And I could really, yeah, and I didn't know about the nerves. You know, I just could see that you were preparing for a magical event that you were creating and mm -hmm. and that that um, energy can came through your stories. So no wonder everyone showed up and were engaged because it was really beautiful the way you did that. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was a real, I, th I think it was a turning point for me in that I suddenly became serious about what I was doing. You know, for a few years before that, I had been showing up and sharing things, but I never started it to, for it to become a business in the first place. I just wanted to share, you know, what I'd learned. And then that kind of snowballed into different things. And I started my podcast and I, you know, I started doing live events and just just talking about the things that I'd learned and then I realized that actually the best way of doing this would be to put it into a course like then people could actually get it and and also oh well, I'm gonna make money if I do that great that's a great bonus so it all came very organically um through the idea of you know what's for you know I, I was very into the idea of what's for the highest good at that point so quite a spiritual connection with what's for the highest good what was my what would my highest self say to me how can I show up as the best version of my you know what how do I show up as that future self who does that? And that was how I did it, you know, having that kind of higher, higher purpose, really, um, because that transcends all the all the other human shit <laughs> that we're always and, dealing yeah. with. <laughs> exactly. And and it sounds like a very intuitive way to find your path and and then build a business and, and keep following that purpose that you have. And you mentioned about then having a vision for your future self future life you know and I know that your it's a coaching mastermind that you have called happen isn't it which is such yeah a, such a powerful word happen and yeah. that sounds more more intentional like more I want to make yeah. things happen I want to bring things in like do you feel that you're kind of shifting I mean I guess we always need the intuition but we mm. need the drive and the the direction as well it's it's a balance isn't it absolutely and I think you know I started exploring supporting people to help them also you know make the things happen in their life that they wanted to make happen um a couple of years ago and then I realized again like I was experimenting with like how best to do this and I created a little course called Ignite um which was so much fun and essentially takes people through you know the idea of um holding the vision um 
moving the needle. So that's the first step is like holding that vision of what, what you actually want to feel, what you want to create, moving the needle. So you're consistently showing up and actually doing the stuff that you need to do, because it's one thing having a vision, but it's not going to magically fall into your lap. Like you need to have a plan. You need to show up. You need to have goals. You need to have a strategy. And then it's the final piece, which is to trust and and receive and let go. Mm-hmm. And that's the piece that I think a lot of people um and often me, I have to learn it myself again and again and again, but we need to trust and let go. Otherwise, we're just going to have a sort of manic energy all the time, like trying to get to where we want to get to. So those are the three kind of steps, really. And then I realized that, uh, you know, it's these courses are great, but actually what people really need and, and love is is the accountability and that feeling of being together on this journey Um And I wanted to take it to like higher level women, like higher. And when I say that, I just mean that people who are really serious about doing it, (laughs) who are really ready, you know, who who won't need a lot of handholding, but will want, you know, um, high level coaching and, um, you know, and to be in the energy of other people who are who are wanting that too but also like a very kind and compassionate space so that's where happen came from um my mastermind and i just absolutely love it it's so much fun i've run it twice back to back it will come back next year uh, later on this year um and through that what i've realized is that yeah that 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 connection with other women is so um powerful and you know when we're on the same wavelength doing similar things the energy in there is like a really high um inspiring energy and helps people to continue to to do the stuff that they need to do to get to where they want to get to um so that's yeah that is just so much fun and I really love running that and that community connection with others is is so powerful and so essential and I think that's what can be lacking a lot nowadays and with social media and at home working and everything that's quite at a distance you know we, we can feel very alone can't we in our own plans and projects and work and dreams and and yeah. to be able to be among like-minded people I mean that's one of the reasons that I run this podcast is is it gives that voice and that that chance to drop into a conversation I feel like all our listeners are in this conversation with us right now yeah, um, yeah. and you know can take part in it and and feel less alone and have that connection and understanding like there's other people that, that get me and I'm I'm not on my own with my struggles and my dreams and you know there is a way I can make this happen happen there we go there's the word yeah yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, so yeah we come in we create these groups don't we and we have our own skills and our own experience that we bring in but then the real power I think is in the women that come together and oh. and what they bring you know it's it's, it's phenomenal quite to amazing watch. to watch it is it's really really special and you know it, uh, when I did it the first time I was like god that was a, that was amazing. and it's you know only eight to ten women each time so it's quite a small small group of women um and you don't know what's going to happen you don't know if it's going to gel I thought it would but you just don't don't quite know but honestly the the way that it you know worked was just amazing and then when I did it again I thought well maybe the first time was a you know a bit of a fluke (laughs) let's see what happens the next time but the next time was just so amazing as well Mm -hmm. um but just had a different kind of energy so I just think if you bring people together who are of the of the right kind of you you know you're at the right stage for doing that work and supporting each other as well um, I remember one of them was saying, you know, I absolutely love my friends. I've got really great friends, but a lot of them don't really understand this whole self-development thing that I'm doing, the personal growth. And also, I almost feel like I'm, you know, does this feel weird to say, but I feel like I'm kind of leaving them behind a little bit. And I was like, no, that is what it feels like. And actually, that's something that can be quite hard when we're kind of evolving and transforming into new versions of ourselves and like kind of waking up a bit really to what's possible in, in our lives sometimes we do feel a little bit like we're leaving behind people that have maybe been in our lives for years and years. And that can be, that can be quite challenging. I think when you are, um, you know, when you're healing, when you're becoming a new version of yourself um, and you have to, you have to sort of get comfortable with that um, Mm. and really own it, I think. And there's always somewhere else to go with it. That's what I love about personal development it never really ends you're just consistently stepping into these new versions of you and thinking well what else can I do like how else can I call in like amazing energy into my life and make amazing things happen um while also you know sitting on your bum and eating (laughs) eating your hobnobs when you want to because that 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 is very necessary as well (laughs) absolutely yeah and it's, it's an uncovering isn't it it's like the peeling back the layers of everything that we've 
built up and protected ourselves with from day one you know when we became conscious little children and learning about the world and keeping ourselves small and doing what you know we're supposed to do and follow the path we're supposed to do and the career that was expected of us and whatever else Mm -hmm. and I think we get to a point in our lives and whether that is the 40-ish kind of time or whatever it is you know and if it's if it's post children or you know when that part of your life has has had its completion at one point it's yeah who am I really like what is it I really really want and the uncovering of that it does feel like a brand new version but I think it's truly who we are isn't it it's our authentic selves and yeah perhaps who we dreamed of when we were that little girl of like I had all kinds of big dreams when I was younger and then yeah things change along the way and you you start to believe it's it's not possible but yeah, yes so exactly you know. so you, you that, that belief that something's not possible that's the belief that you want to be exploring right and like looking at and looking at from all angles like is yeah. you know recognizing like thoughts and beliefs are actually movable thoughts and beliefs are not something that yeah. are factual they're just things that we can yes, we can so. look at from that bystander perspective and I think yeah using that idea of um uh doing your own thing and coming home to yourself like you were just saying like that's the key isn't it like coming back home to you the true self the one before we were told what to do and who to be and where to go etc and I think for for me because I've never sort of I, I did have a job but it wasn't like a corporate job you know I worked alongside my dad for a number of years like creating still very creative like you know we were and I I, I was working alongside him and kind of coming up with the ideas and doing all that so I've I've never I've never done the corporate nine to five. And I think in a way that helped me because I know it's so possible to live a life which is not dictated by what society tells us that we have to to do. Um, And it would, you know, there, of course, there's like privilege at play there because I was able to do that um, because I was supported. But it's also possible in lots of different ways to do the things that we don't believe are possible and I you know I have so much evidence of that now with the women of my mastermind and you know lots of people who are kind of deciding like no I don't want to do that I'm going to do something else um so yeah living with that kind of explorative explorative mindset of like what is the belief that I'm holding what else could be true about that is very freeing and expansive Mm. and then everything that brings us and I know joy is another one of your most loved topics and something Mm. you work with a lot tell us what joy means to you and how that Mm. shows up so I have this this sort of concept of a joy first approach and Mm. essentially what I mean by that is that when we are prioritizing how we feel above pretty much everything else then we're going to be able to function so much better so living this joy first idea and that's not the you know I have to be clear and that it's not kind of cancelling other feelings at all but what it's doing is letting you understand that I want to prioritize joy so that my brain is working at the best in the best possible uh way that it that it can because if you think about like how you feel when you are happy I mean to put it really simply how we feel when we're happy we feel like anything is possible we feel like we can do stuff we're not talking down to ourselves when we're happy are we we're you know we're not even really probably talking to ourselves at all in our head we're just in the present we're in the present moment we're in flow we're feeling motivated we're feeling excited we're feeling high on life you know that's the kind of feeling of alignment and feeling of creativity that I think is imperative really if we want to create the life that we really want to lead and of course it's not possible to be in that state of mind 24 7 especially if you've got you know a really stressful job or you work in healthcare in the NHS or you know whatever it is that kind of will take away your your energy but if you can be conscious of of that feeling and if you think god I don't really feel like I've had that feeling for like you know a few weeks or days or months then that's where you really need to think about well why am I not you know my life is right now like right now um and as we said right at the beginning of this episode you know we really don't know what is going to hit tomorrow and I really feel like I live my life like that like I don't know I might get hit by a car tomorrow (laughs) um you know I I might do and therefore I want to prioritize joy because 
then I can show up as my best self for myself, for my children, for my husband and my family, for the people that are in my courses and my memberships and uh, who follow me online. If I'm not prioritizing joy myself, I am not going to be able to show up again and again and again and again and share the things that I think are going to be supportive and helpful. Even if somewhere someone doesn't like what I've got to say, <laughs> like I don't, I don't care because there are lots and lots of people who do like what I have to say. And there are lots of people who like what other people have got to say. But if I don't have that joy first approach, then I am not going to, I'm not going to have the confidence, the self-worth, the self-compassion to show up. So that is why I prioritize it. And that's what it means to me. It's, 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 yeah, it's like everything is key. Mm, mm. I can really hear that in so many different ways. And it's, yeah, a shift of perspective, isn't it? It's what you focus on, what you're looking for, what you expect to see. Um, you know, it's, it's whether we look at things, because we are all going to face challenges, but do we look at it from a problem-focused way or a solution-focused way? You know, it's like, are we heading towards the the possibility and the potential, all the problems and the obstacles? You know, it's, it's different perspectives, isn't it? absolutely yes. and changes the direction we go in and with with that in mind talking about joy the one question that I ask all of my guests and I'm looking forward to your answer to Alice what brings you joy okay easy 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 for me so dancing is a big big deal for me love a dance I've always loved dancing so festivals outside in my kitchen literally anywhere I do love my music and a dance I love cold water swimming that's um something that I've always done wild swimming essentially just being outside and swimming is something that I've always really loved and um I'm doing more and more of as I'm as I'm getting older um and uh just reading reading and a good coffee that's you know that's my happy place so yeah joy for me just you know you've brought in all of your senses there as you talk yeah. about that every sensory experience that's beautiful yeah food food. (laughs) give me all the gorgeous food yeah yeah love it all (laughs) amazing amazing thank you and where can people find you where where's the best place to to find alice rose online yeah so i'm on instagram at this is alice rose and then my website is this is alice rose.com which is pretty much brand new as we're speaking now um about to be yeah rebranded um so yeah come and find me I'd love to chat um really do love meeting women who are interested in personal development and uh, a bit of spirituality you know cold water swimming whatever it is I love connecting with other women all the time so yeah come and find me <laughs> lovely thank you I've really really enjoyed our conversation thank you for joining us here Alice thank you so much thanks for having me Thank you for listening to the Fertile Mindset podcast. Please rate and review and remember to follow or subscribe on Apple, Spotify or wherever you are listening. Now, if this conversation has sparked something within you and you want to live your life with clarity, purpose and joy, then I would love you to sign up for my daily seeds emails. They're delivered to you each day, giving you messages of support and planting seeds of inspiration. You'll also receive welcome gifts from me, including an EFT tuition video and some of my favourite tapping exercises to clear overwhelm, reduce stress, help you focus and more, all completely free of charge. I'll also keep in touch with you about upcoming events and support that I think you'll like. Go to fertilemindset.com slash daily seeds to sign up and I'll see you again next week for another episode of the Fertile Mindset Podcast.